like a Rolex watch. Wow, yes. Unbelievable. So Billy just rode up on the 1965 BMW R50, produced for the uh, European market. The bike was purchased in South America and actually brought here through the Port of Miami on a road trip, and it sat in a private collection for a very long time, most recently on display here at the New England Motorcycle Museum. It's original paint, very low mileage, and it's got some provenance. Billy, I'm going to pass you the mic, and, and what do you think of this thing after oh, this, our first ride? It's a beautiful bike, Kenny. This is really a lovely machine. You know, uh, all day long, these bikes will run and run and run and run. This machine's got, I think, 23,000 kilometers on it. That's very low mileage for a machine like this. Uh, it is, performance-wise, uh, they're steady eddy. Uh, if you've never ridden one of these things, they're really uh, probably one of the most robust and stout motorcycles ever built. Uh, I've owned a few myself, and uh, it's very unique, uh, that's for sure. I'm told they're 24 horsepower. Uh, that's basically two 250cc cylinders laying flat, and uh, 24 horsepower doesn't sound like much, but these are uh, rather stout, heavy motorcycles, and it propels it along just fine. This is a bike you could ride at 60, 70 miles an hour all day long. They're a fantastic machine. And started up beautifully, easily runs. We put it around here in the museum, first, second gear, you know, really smooth and then down with that low tick over idle, Kenny. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just love that. You know, chug, 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 chug. Guys, That's what it is. the bike's been revived by Ted Smith, the uh, former president of the AMCA, uh, Antique Motorcycle Club of America, New England Yankee chapter. He has a very impressive collection on display here in the museum. And, uh, Ted is 78 now, and he's looking to start liquidating some of the bikes in his collection. And this is one of the first to the block. He does have an, a 1928 R62 that's going on bringatrailer.com uh, shortly. Check out the original coating inside this tank. This is just a total survivor. Original paint shows beautifully. It has not gone through our service department. There's zero touch-up on this bike anywhere. Um, check out the original chrome on the front wheel. Just remarkable. Uh, newer period correct tires. Front fender's intact, all the lights work, um, speedometer, odometer, and functional condition. Are these original uh, Magura grips on it, Bill? Yes, yeah, these are the stock original grips, and these are the European version uh, handlebars that came with the Euro models. I would replace my stock American bars that had a cross brace, and they're quite high. I like this uh, position on this bike especially. So these are the stock original European version handlebars. Aside from the uh, German uh, aftermarket period saddle. Um, the bike has some aftermarket uh, slip-on mufflers um, that give it just a, a really nice sort of uh, bark to it. Yeah, for sure. You know, and the stock mufflers on these would, would rust out because they captured all the moisture if you weren't going on long runs all the time. Let me tell you, the saddle, I believe, on this bike is a Schorschmeyer, and that would have been OEM stock. Is that correct? Yes, oh, they came me, with Dad. either one, either or a Solo. I think you could buy the Solo as, a, as an accessory, but I'm pretty sure all the bikes came with the Schorschmeyer seat. So, uh, and look at that seat. I mean, it's got not a tear in it, and that's been around for a long, long time, 60 years. Yeah, uh, and the fuel tank, the paint job on it, these are all hand rubbed paint, and uh, the pinstripe were, on these bikes were done by hand. Uh, wow. And the artist that did the work at the BMW factory signed each and every one of these tanks with his initials on the bottom. So when you take this tank off, you're going to find that guy's initials on the bottom. No doubt about it. It's wow. been that way on both of my slash twos. Really look at it, but I think so guys, I paused the camera to get the keys for the tank cover here. Billy, what do we have inside here? Whoa. Oh my God, look at this. This is the original BMW shop towel. Oh my God. Yeah, this came from the factory with this bike in 1965 along with the original tool pouch. So this, I'm told that you could do anything on one of these machines, uh, anything just about uh, uh, on the roadside with, with this tool pouch. They were very comprehensive. And it looks like this has seen some, some use, but these are all the original uh, BMW tools. Wow. In very good condition. Yep, very cool indeed. 
Yep. And tire irons. If you needed to change a flat on the road, you got tire irons here to do that with. Wow. Good, luck, good luck with those little short ones. Yeah, right. It has some bloody knuckles, but hey, you could get it. You get it there, right? Right, right. So to have this here with the BMW shop towel, it's just remarkable that it stayed with the bike all this time, and the bike has seen some service. So you know, sometimes these things get separated from the bike. You know, they don't wind up staying. But this uh, this bike is very well preserved, and it's got a very very rich history. That, yeah, and that's what we're going to show you next. So I wanted to make a point to show you the original chrome on the wheels is in remarkable condition. The tank interior is like brand new. The tool kit is still present in the side of the fuel tank. Um, and over here we have the provenance that I was talking about. So to start, clean and clear title, um, state of Wisconsin. We have the original uh, purchase ticket for the motorcycle here. As, per as, as mentioned, it was purchased uh, from South America. Um, we'll have an up-close photo of this letter right here. Maybe we can get this translated for for you guys. OEM uh, BMW instruction manual. And it looks like we have, uh, um, what is this, Bill? Something more in German. That may be a setup manual. I, I don't really know. I don't read German. You want to take us through the, uh, the, the story here? The Bill? story, you know, it basically tells itself uh, the, Hal Hilson is in this picture here. He was in the Peace Corps in the 60s. And when his tenure was up with the Peace Corps, he decided to come back to America and ride a BMW. So he ordered one into Peru. I believe this is um, uh, somewhere in Peru. Anyways, I don't really know Peru that well. But uh, this is when he took delivery of the bike. And uh, it explains here, the brand new bike arrived at the Peruvian Forestry Service office where he worked in Lima, Peru. And the local people were very curious because, you know, those kind of bikes did not exist in uh, uh, countries like Peru. They were so poor, that they didn't have much of anything. So to see something like that was quite a spectacle. So they'd gather around and, and, uh, and kind of a, make, makes for a good feeling for everyone. So picture number two. I mean, yeah. th these are numbered. This, this is all coming with the bike, the sort right. of provenance here. This is Pura. Peru, about 600 miles north of Lima, where they left Lima and stayed with his family before crossing the border into Ecuador. And the man was a worker for the North District Peruvian Forestry Service, so they were somehow in cahoots. This is the bike. This, this is the bike and, and the owner, Hal. Uh, and this is his friend's bike, uh, an R27, uh, which is uh, half the engine of the R50, which is only 24 horsepower. So this is a 12 horsepower, 250cc shaft drive motorcycle that the two of them travel along together. Um, you know, on quite an adventure. And it's not hilly over there, it's mountainous. And here they are on the Pan American Highway in Ecuador, 9,000 feet. So can you imagine riding from sea level up to 9,000 feet with 12 horsepower or 24 horsepower with a, what, five or 600 pound motorcycle all packed up to go with a rider as well? That's quite a payload. And these roads were not forgiving. They were uh, dirt, uh, cobblestone, uh, gravel, you know, nasty. And uh, from what I understand, from what I've read here, they had a trouble-free run. So that, was, that bike was brand new. It got run in, bedded in on this uh, very arduous uh, trip, difficult trip. This is at the, uh, uh, the equator. Here, here the bike sits in the northern hemisphere with the front tire and the southern hemisphere with the rear tire. That's wow. right on the equator. So that's pretty remarkable. You know, that's something every tourist does, I'm sure, that goes by there. But not everyone rides a motorcycle through there. Yeah, that's at the monument of the equator. And then picture five here is the northern part of the Pan American Highway. Uh, and it's never been developed. So um, it's 66 miles of rainforest. And they couldn't travel any further on the highway, so they went to Cartagena. Columbia and spent several days on the coastal city uh, trying to secure passage on a boat to get themselves across the Panama Canal. So what, what an adventure. Just a, unbelievable, really. Yeah, in the days before cell phones, you know, everything had to be done by uh, handwritten or, you know, a telephone if you could find one. Um, you know, pretty remarkable uh, that that motorcycle. This, I believe, is some kind of a passage for the bike. Um, it's an export document that would... Uh, allow this machine to travel across the country line. Um, and again, this is something to do with the forestry service. Uh, Jordan helped me decipher this, but I really, uh, it's basically um, some political document that uh, 
has to go along with the bike for passage from country to country. And again, here over, uh, we have the title, uh, which is very neat to have on something so old, because titles weren't issued on bikes back then. Quite a story that's told there, though. So there you go, guys. Two thumbs up here mechanically. I would say the bike's a 10. What do you think, Bill? I, I think it's a 10, and it's showing patina, which I like. I don't like something that's too nice that you can't use. Uh, this is a machine that you could actually ride around on. And here you see on the frame here and down below by the rear foot peg, by the, by the peg, there's a uh, sidecar mount by the foot peg. So you can basically plug a sidecar onto this machine. They were built for, the, for hauling sidecars. The Earl's forks are uh, excellent handling forks, rigid, and they are a built-in anti-dive. Back in the 80s, they had all kinds of, uh, with telescopic forks, uh, anti-dive assemblies that would be added onto forks. There was a, a lot of work. This gets the job done mechanically. Uh, so when you grab the front brake, the front end doesn't dive. It's perfect for sidecar hauling. And I believe on the back fender, uh, that is a Peruvian uh, registration wow. on, on top of the taillight that's been with the bike since noon. Wow. So that's really, really incredible. So very well preserved. So although it's showing a little bit of wear in some spots from the journey, maybe a little bit of patina, overall condition of the paint, the hardware, the chrome on the wheels is just exceptional. Right. Um, for an unrestored bike out, this, this is uh, probably in the top 10% of what we've seen through the shop um, without any touch up or polish or doctoring of any way, shape or form. Uh, the, of course, the bike's been clean, but um, it hasn't gone through our detail shop. This is the way that it came in. This is the way that it's been on the floor of the museum. This is the way that it's been since it was parked uh, back in the 60s. Right, not repainted, not resprayed, and there's no evidence of any of it ever tipping over, you know, which would be here in the headlight ring, or, you know, oh, maybe there's a little nick here. There, there's something here, but that's, you know, part of the patina of the bike. It's, it's been on a long trip, and from what I understand from uh, Ted's description of what happened with the bike, it uh, was parked after that trip, that epic trip to America from Peru. It never was used again. So it, it served one purpose, and that was to, you know, for a great adventure for the young man, Hal, and his friend, and then to wind up in America, here in the hands of uh, the good man, Ted, who has uh, been the keeper of so many wonderful BMWs. This is a great bike, and uh, it's coming from a, a really good source. Robert is on the newer side, um, just recently replaced. Billy, can you get a date code off of one of these? Sure. Before we sign that. off? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if not, we'll get it for the eBay description. You see the treads essentially new. Oh, there we are. Two, six, four. Two six four, right. Rubber feels nice and sticky. No signs of checking. Uh, the nips are still present. Right. These tires would certainly have been replaced some time ago, but they're in good condition. This, in fact, looks almost brand new on the on the rear. The front's a bit older, I think, because there's no nips on the tires. But again, they're very in very good condition. And this bike isn't a bike that you're going to go out and ride 100 miles an hour on. You, you might go 60. You could go 100, I think, Bill. If you went down a really steep hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. We can ship the bike anywhere in the States and expensively message your zip code for a shipping quote. We do offer financing through Freedom Road Financial. You can call in for a pre-application, 860-471-0192. With any questions, message through eBay or uh, send us a note through the website or call in. Any closing remarks, Bill? No, uh, come and get it. This bike is going to go quick. It's, uh, it, it, these bikes have a following. This bike is in perfect, unrestored condition. And um, I hope it goes to a really good home. Thanks so, for watching, guys. Good luck bidding. God bless America.